A warm welcome to all our virtual participants. This webinar is brought to you by the Biorisk Association of the Philippines in collaboration with the Philippine Association of Medical Technologists. Today, the biggest threat to everyone around the globe is COVID-19. Veterinary care is considered an essential service during the pandemic. The presentations will tackle the measures that need to be taken to reduce the risk of exposure of workers and clients in veterinary facilities. As the pandemic changes the landscape of veterinary practice and the client's behavior, established and novel approaches in veterinary care have been seen in the local setting during the COVID-19 pandemic. These trends gave us hope that sustainable veterinary care can be attained during the pandemic with consideration to the safety of veterinary workers and clients. Feline and canine coronaviruses are widespread among dog and cat populations but rarely infect humans. However, aside from the endemic coronavirus infection in these species, recent cases of COVID-19 infection among pet animals have been reported. This lecture will also focus on effect of most common coronaviruses in our pets. Let us all welcome our moderator for this webinar. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the BRAP PAMET PIF webinar series. To give the uh, welcome remarks, let us have Dr. Miguel Martin Moreno. Good evening, colleagues in the field of laboratory biosafety. It has been three years since our, our set convention when BRAP embraced the world concept of One Health, thereby members from the flora and fauna sector of country. Since then, BRAP has welcomed veterinarians and animal handlers, membership applicants. In response to that inspiring move of themselves applying for membership, BRAP offered a fully sponsored five-day technical training workshop on bio-risk management and 67 veterinarians and animal handlers were accepted into this fully sponsored program. Where if it not for this pandemic, we would have finished our second batch for bio-risk management technical training last February 2020. But no pandemic will stop BRAP and PAMET from continuously imparting to the interested our topics in our webinars. Hence, let us, from our, let us hear from our two vet experts tonight who will be properly introduced in a while. So without further ado, I formally welcome everyone in this webinar and those on Facebook live streaming entitled Pets in Time of COVID-19. I wish a fun-filled learning to all, and as we all say, break a leg, everyone. Thank you very much, Dr. Moreno. And now to give the opening remarks, let us have Mr. Ronaldo Puno, the President of PAMET and Vice President of BRAP. A very pleasant evening to all our participants and uh, welcome to the PIF of series of uh, free webinars being jointly collaborated by BRAP and PAMET. And this is... Uh, one way of continuously providing platforms for learnings and updates despite the difficult time that we are in for the last six months or so. Today's topics focus on pets, something that is a bit different from the usual COVID-19 related topics that we discussed in our past webinars. Nonetheless, this is something very interesting and exciting. It is a pleasant break from the series of technical discussions that we had before and we are in for topics that are truly close to our hearts. And just like many of you, I am also a fan of dogs. Around the world, pets curl up under, under desks, on laps and in windows, watching quietly as their humans work and study at home, all the while trusting us to take good care of them. With many of us cut off from loved ones during coronavirus pandemic, pets offer much needed companionship along with a host of mental and physical health benefits. If you're an animal lover, you already know how much joy pets can bring. Research show that pets can lower blood pressure, boost mood, and reduce anxiety. And of course, they make great companions. And during the coronavirus pandemic, 
these benefits are more important than ever, especially if you're feeling isolated and lonely. Our pets, our family, how can we keep them safe and healthy during COVID-19? What are the measures that need to be taken to reduce the risk of exposures of workers and clients in veterinary facilities? What are the effects of most common coronaviruses in our pets? Our two esteemed invited speakers will enlighten us and provide essential information related to these and more questions. And I hope everyone will have new learnings while we enjoy our webinar. Again, good evening and thank you very much to everyone. Thank you very much, Sir Ronnie. And now let's start our, our lecture proper. The first speaker is a graduate of Doctor of Veterinary Medicine from the University of Southern Mindanao. He's currently a scientist at the United Laboratories Biology Sciences Department of Affairs Division. He's very much involved with the different veterinary association, active as a participant, and he's also a speaker in different uh, fora in animal welfare and use of laboratory animals in research. Ladies and gentlemen, let us hear from our speaker, Dr. Robin Lunar, to talk about pets in the time of COVID-19. Um, good evening, everyone. Thank you, Ma'am Laila, and good evening to all. I'm the uh, product of the first batch when v uh, BRAP opened its doors to veterinarian. Uh, again, uh, I hope everyone is in great shape and, uh, and I hope everyone is okay despite the challenging situation we are facing. Uh, millions have this kind of disease and hundreds of thousands of lives have been claimed by the ongoing pandemic. And as we see it, there's no stop sign yet in the horizon. Whether a vaccine is avail available soon is not yet clear. However, certain measures were implemented by the government to mitigate the risk based on their assessments. With One Health concept, we acknowledge the interconnection of people, plants, animals, and their shared environment. So what might happen to one may also happen to another, or people get infected, or could animals get infected too? Also in One Health, the source of risk to human may come from one another, maybe from the environments or animals or from bro both. If we are interrelated, what could be the effect of this pandemic to the animals, especially to our pet animals? In this talk, we will discuss and know the kind of risk we humans and animals are facing. In this talk, we will discuss timeline of the pandemic, the cause of the disease, the family it belongs to, how does it replicate inside the cell or in the body of the target host, saan nanggagaling yung kanyang pathogenicity, and paano siya nakakapag-infect ng mga tao, and how it is transmitted. And on the third part, who will be uh, the... Re Hello? May lang po. Kita pa po ba? Wala do. Ayan po. Sorry. And, ayan po. Pasensya na. <laughs> yes, Kita okay, na po? Yes, okay. Po, Let's continue. And on the third part, makikita natin kung sinong maapektuhan ng virus na to. Um, let's first discuss the timeline. Paano siya nag-umpisa? Uh, on December 31, 2019, China alerted the World Health Organization to a cluster of unusual cases of pneumonia that were diagnosed in Wuhan in Hubei province. Although the cause of the disease was unknown, the patient's symptoms and clinical features were most suggestive of a viral infection. And on January, last January 7, 2020, officials reported that they had isolated the causative agent behind the cases, a novel coronavirus. Novel, alam naman natin, lagi naririnig natin sa news, means new or different from anything seen. Oh 
And January 30, um, the World Health Organization declared the public health emergency of international concern. And on the same day, the, w, the um, DOH reported the first case of COVID-19 in a 30-year-old female Chinese national. And last February 11, 2020, the ICTV, or the International Committee on Taxonomy of Viruses, announced that Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2, or SARS-CoV-2, as the official name of the virus. And on the same day, the WHO announced that COVID-19 is the name of the new disease caused by the SARS-CoV-2. And March 7, the first confirmed local case, a local transmission in COVID as announced by the DOH. The, um, and March 11, WHO announced COVID-19 outbreak as pandemic. What are the signs and symptoms of, the, of this infection in humans? Um, the signs of symptoms may appear two to 14 days after exposure to the virus. People with COVID-19 reported having fever, chills, cough, shortness of breath, or difficulty in breathing, fatigue, muscle or body aches, headache, loss of smell or taste, sore throat, congestion, runny nose, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. In the risk assessment, it is important to identify, study, and know about the risk of the organism so that we know the strategy to eliminate eliminate it, or maybe control it. As I've mentioned uh, in the previous slide, the disease is called COVID-19 and is caused by severe acute respiratory syn syndrome coronavirus 2 or SARS-CoV-2. It is said that it's similar to SARS coronavirus and MERS coronavirus. The use of SARS in naming SARS-CoV-2 does not derive from the name of the SARS disease, but it is a natural extension of the taxonomic practice for viruses in SARS species. This name was chosen because the virus is genetically related to the coronavirus responsible for the SARS outbreak of 2003. It is said that the natural reservoir is the bats. They referred as coronaviruses because the virus particle exhibit a characteristic corona or crown of spike proteins and S protein around its lipid envelope. Later on, malalaman natin kung anong importance ng S protein at sa uh, ng COVID importance ng S protein dun sa infection na, na nag nagaganap. Coronavirus infection are common in animals as we will discuss later on and in humans. Most um, some strain of coronavirus are zoonotic which can be transmitted between animals and humans but many strains are not zoonotic. Coronaviruses are family of RNA ribonucleic acid viruses. Coronaviruses are the largest group of viruses belonging to the order Nidoviralis, which uh, includes Coronaviridae, Arteriviridae, Misoniviridae, and Roniviridae families. The Coronaviridae comprise of one of two subfamilies, the Coronavirinae family, with other other one is the Torovirinae. The coronavirinae are further subdivided into four genera, the alpha, beta, gamma, and delta coronaviruses. The viruses are initially sorted into this genera based on serology, but now divided by phylogenetic clustering. Coronavirus uh, contain a non-segmented positive sense RNA virus. This positive sense RNA virus contains the codes of the protein that the virus needed for the host to, to create later on. For the pathogenesis or the development of the disease following infection is determined by many parameters or factors. One of it is the tissues in which the those host cells reside. Kailangan, may yung, kailangan yung cells is meron siyang specific receptor na hinahanap ng virus. And the fitness of the host response. Kaya ba ng immune response ng host na kontrolin yung infection? Yung age ng host. Uh, their age group Later on, we will discuss na merong age group between animals na uh, uh, vulnerable for this kind of infection. Next, we need to cons uh, 
consider yung gender, health, immunological history of the host, or if may ongoing sakit ba yung host na napabilis niya yung infection, pag-develop ng sakit. The size of the host population and the environment in which it resides, all contributing components. Pathogenicity is defined as the ability of the virus or organism to cause disease or harm the organism. Pathogenicity is linked to the function of the non-structural proteins or NSP and structural proteins of the virus. The non-structural proteins is able to block the host innate immune response or panlaban ng katawan sa infection. While the, while the different structural proteins, um, which are presented in the rightmost part of your screen, like the nucleocapsid protein, the spike protein, or the the S protein, the E protein or envelope protein, and the M protein or the membrane protein. With the S protein of the virus, makikita natin importance niya sa, sa next slide. Speci specifically, spike uh, receptor binding domain or RBD is the fundamental peptide domain in the pathogenesis of the infection because it allows binding of the ACE2 or the angiotensin converting enzyme 2 receptor found in the lungs and other tissue um, kasi kung walang binding na magaganap between the cell and yung virus through S proteins, walang entry yung virus sa kawalang infection na magaganap. So, uh, sa unang SARS-CoV, nagmutate yung SARS according to the researchers, nagmutate yung virus at naging efficient yung binding niya kaya ang laki nung effect niya sa tao. Let's see, sana wag naman, let's see later on if this will happen to SARS-CoV which is pamilya rin naman ng ng uh, unang SARS. So ano ba talaga yung gusto ng virus? Gusto niya, gusto niya lang naman, katulad natin, na mabuhay and mag-replicate. Pero nagkataon, kailangan ng host or ng sponsor para i-transcribe at i-translate yung protein na dala niya. Kaya single-stranded RNA siya, yun yung dala niya. At nagkataon, nandun tayo. In this slide, we will discuss the replication of the coronavirus and how this obligate intracellular parasite use its host. The virus has a single-stranded RNA. It is more readable version of the DNA. The, ob the main objective of the virus, as I mentioned earlier, is to replicate, to survive, and to propagate. Those structures sticking out, yung nasa right side niyo, yung parang sungay-sungay dyan that makes it characteristically parang crown, <clears throat> are the are the uh, proteins and sugars. The S protein are basically the key that locks with the receptor that is found in the cell, inside our body, or in the animals. This receptor inside our body, for example, in the alveoli, is the ACE2 or the angiotensin converting enzyme 2. ACE2 is highly expressed in the lungs, arteries, heart, kidney, and intestine. This enzyme the ACE2 converts the previously converted angiotensin. This previously converted angiotensin is, uh, ang function niya is to raise the blood pressure of the, of the, sa katawan. And it, con it will be converted to angiotensin 1 to 7. The, the function of the angiotensin 1 to 7 is to drop the blood pressure and it is uh, um, anti-inflammatory function niya. Once the virus makes a lock and key in the surface of the cell, it fuses with the cell membrane of the cells. So natatanggal yung outer membrane niya. And the RNA strand inside the, the virus will be released inside the host cell. Once the virus uh, is inside the cell, it replicates in assembly. And it does this by hijacking the host cell transcription machinery. It will raid the ribosome. Ribosome, as we all know, performs the protein synthesis of the cell. Eventually, the ribosomes produce the, uh, polypeptide proteins. These polypeptide proteins could now read the single-stranded RNA of the SARS-CoV. The virus RNA contains the code of the protein that it is needed to be created by the host. These proteins are structural proteins uh, ko kanina, to create the whole virus itself. So once inside the cell, these proteins were created and, we will, and we will it will be reassembled to, into a new virus including the RNA strand, and the newly created virus will be released outside the cell and through excitosis. So ang ending nito, millions of viruses will be released in the alveoli, into the lungs together with this, and due to the immune response of the body, this will be coughed out of our body and spread 
the virus. So after knowing the cycle in which the virus were created, we now um, here in your screen are the common or the most significant coronaviruses. Here are no, um, we'll focus on the coronaviruses in dogs, cats, and humans. As I've mentioned, coronavirinae is further subdivided into alpha, beta, gamma, delta. But as you see in the, your screen, we will focus on the alpha and beta dahil sa effect niya. Um, we, have se we have several uh, alpha coronaviruses found in cats, like uh, feline enteric coronavirus, feline infectious peritonitis, peritonitis virus, and under this, alpha group is one found in dogs, which is the canine or enteric canine coronavirus. The other coronavirus in dogs is classified as beta coronavirus, which is the canine respiratory coronavirus. Under this beta coronavirus, viruses is the SARS-CoV, the MERS-CoV, and now the SARS-CoV-2. The SARS-CoV-2 is a beta coronavirus. Ito yung naunang SARS-CoV was identified as a causative agent of the severe acute respiratory syndrome or SARS outbreak that occurred in 2002 to 2003 in Guangdong province of China. And another coronavirus in 2012, a novel human coronavirus emerged in the Middle East. This virus was named Middle East uh, Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus or MERS-CoV and was classified as beta coronavirus and it causes a highly pathogenic respiratory infections in Saudi Arabia and other Middle East countries, countries in the Middle East. So we have a two, uh, we have two coronaviruses, the canine respiratory coronaviruses. Later on, makikita, pinipresent ko sa inyo to, na para ipakita na meron ding coronavirus si cats and dogs. Pero later on, masasagutin natin kung nagko-contribute ba sila doon sa SARS, uh, sa SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-2 infection. So sa canine respiratory, um, canine resp respiratory coronavirus and the canine coronavirus in the enteric form, uh, contributing as one of the many pathogenic uh, organisms to cause the canine infectious respiratory disease or kennel cough. It is mild, self-limiting clinical signs that are typically non-specific and include dry cough, sneezing, nasal discharge, but could progress to pneumonia together with other bacteria or other causative agent. In some cases, it is associated with outbreaks of severe respiratory disease in dogs, in shelters, and in boarding facilities. The second is the canine uh, canine uh, coronavirus, which causes mild to severe gastroenteritis, but self-limiting and typically produces either no clinical signs or only mild enteritis. This is part of the vaccination program here in the Philippines. Next is the feline coronaviruses. First, we have the F uh, FECV, which is an enteric virus in the cats that is highly contagious and can be transmitted through fecooral route. It produces either no clinical signs or only mild diarrhea. If this uh, virus mutates, the FECV, which 10% most of the time, less lang yung incidence niya, it causes a more lethal systemic infection. The, the disease is called as a filial infectious peritonitis and caused by the FIP virus. FIP is a non-treatable lethal systemic infection and younger cats are at greater risk. So, um, as a, now, the third member of the beta uh, is the SARS-CoV-2. In this slide, we can see on the left screen are the different hosts per infection or infectious disease. The SARS-CoV-2 infected civet cats and infected humans in 2002. The next, on the lower part, is the MERS-CoV-2 is found in dromedary camels and infected humans in 2012. And now several studies have suggested that bats may have may be the potential natural host of the SARS-CoV. What is their basis? Because the whole genome nucleotide sequence of SARS-CoV-2 is 96% identical to that bat coronaviruses virus. Well, the SARS-CoV-2 has, has been isolated from the pangolins, and it was found that the pangolins coronavirus genomes have 85.5 to 92.4% similarity to the SARS-CoV-2, suggesting that pangolin may be a potential intermediate host for SARS-CoV-2. And in these three infectious disease, bats are always are said 
lagi siyang nadadamay as a species of origin. Researchers are saying that humans were able to contract the disease through direct contact of people of the intermediate host. It is in the wet market of China, as you, as you heard in the news. Now, how did the human-to-human -human transmission occurs? Um, there are three main contact, uh, contact uh, transmission of SARS-CoV. The contact and uh, contact and droplet transmission. Check it out. Contact and droplet transmission, uh, airborne transmission, and uh, fomite transmission. Passage of virus from one person to person with COVID-19 is through contact or droplet transmission, airborne transmission, and fomite transmission. Respiratory droplet transmission can occur when a person is in close contact or within one meter, like guy na naririnig natin, with an infected person who has a respiratory symptoms with coughing, sneezing, or who is talking or singing. In these circumstances uh, that I've mentioned, the respiratory drops that include viruses can uh, that, in, that includes virus can reach the mouth, nor, nor uh, nose or eyes of a susceptible person and can result in infection. This could also happen in humans in our pet. Well, according to the studies based dun sa reported, ito yung main uh, uh, transmission na nangyayari sa dogs and cat. Pero tingnan natin kung meron nga bang infection sa dog, uh, sa dog and cat galing sa tao. Next is the air airborne transmission is defined as the spread of the infectious agent caused by the dissemination of droplet nuclei or aerosols that remain infectious when suspended in air over a long distance and time. This happens in confined spaces with no proper ventilation or air exchanges. There are studies published in Hong Kong that they conducted a study to, to trace kung bakit nagkaroon ng infection dun gamit yung room na yon. And they found out that ventilation and air exchange is important in setting up or in controlling the risk of infect or had, uh, people having this kind of uh, virus. Airborne transmission of SARS-CoV-2 can also occur um, during medical procedures that generate aerosols. In dogs and cats, there's no study conducted yet to prove this mode of transmission between human between uh, humans and cat. Next is the fomite. The respiratory secretion of droplets expelled by infected individuals can contaminate the surface and objects. Uh, object objects creating fomites. Fomites are materials or contaminated surfaces that would likely carry the SARS-CoV-2. Viable SARS-CoV-2 virus and or RNA can be found on those surfaces for periods ranging from hours to days, depending on the ambient temperature, including uh, ambient environment, including the temperature and humidity, and the type of surface. Transmission may also occur indirectly through touching surfaces in the in immediate environment or objects contaminated with virus from an in, or from a person having a covid followed by that uh, that person who touches those fomite tinatch niya mouth niya nose and eyes you know, possible unit transmission other uh, controversial or so something to that they are looking forward uh, that they are looking for uh, para improve is our infected biological samples of patients like feces and urine, plasma and serum from patients, intrauterine transmission, and the breast milk. They are, <clears throat> they are considered because SARS-CoV-2 were detected from these samples. No evidence yet from this could be one of the, the most uh, mode of transmission in virus. Under the fomite uh, transmission, there are certain conditions that I've mentioned or characteristic of the surface or environment must be present for this virus to live and be infected, infective. So it could, this could help you identify para kung ano yung mga control measures niyo na later on madadala niyo sa practice niyo or sa bahay natin. First, um, at 4 degrees centigrade, it is a temperature ng ref natin. Um, but there's SARS-CoV is stable on that temperature, but there's a log reduction in infectious titer at 14 days. Extremely stable ang, ang SARS-CoV-2 sa 3 to, a pH na 3 to 10 at room temperature. 
they are generally they are generally stable at smooth surface according to one study conducted in China. Uh, in aluminum, they could last for two to eight hours. Sa copper, four hours. Sa metal and steel, uh, cab, uh, sa steel and ceramics and glass, they could last for five days. Sa paper, few minutes to five hours. However, in food, water, and skin and hair, no evidence yet. They are sensitive to heat and common disinfectants. So pwede natin siyang i-control yung fomites. <clears throat> US EPA and WHO recommended certain disinfectants that could be used. WHO recommended chlor chlorine-based disinfectants. Outright nilang binanggit na chlorine-based disinfectants, hydrogen peroxide, alcohol, quaternary disinfectants is effective in controlling the or killing the virus. However, the US EPA, wala siyang narekomenda. Basta sinabi lang niya, basta registered sa kanila at dumaan sa testing nila, uh, okay siya for COVID. Upon checking their list, um, there's a certain brand available here in the Philippines na kiniklaim nila na effective siya for SARS-CoV-2. US EPA is the US Environmental Protection Agency. <clears throat> now, the question is, is our pets could be infected and from whom? The SARS coronavirus or SARS-CoV-2, as we all know, could be transmitted between humans. Could it be transmitted from humans to animals, dogs and cats? Yes. Could an infected cats or dog infect Pag meron na sila, could they infect humans? As of now, wala pang evidence na to prove to to say otherwise. Could uh, between pets possible yung transmission sa dog? So far, wala. In the natural setting, sa cat, wala pa naman. But experimentally, it happened sa study na kinandak sa China. So aside from humans and anim uh, pet animals, pwede rin ma-infect yung tiger, lions, mink, and of course yung ferret. According to them, ferret could be... Um, uh, uh, mo uh, animal model for testing this uh, virus in laboratory. Although they have coronaviruses, none of these uh, typical feline and canine coronaviruses are directly associated with the current novel coronavirus outbreak. Despite belonging to the same family of viruses, they are all distinct from SARS-CoV-2. Yes, we can transmit or transfer SARS-CoV-2 based on the report reports. And in the next slide, we will uh, one by one, check natin yung pinakaunang mga cases ng coronaviruses na, sina, uh, na galing sa, sa humans. So, <clears throat> pets get infected with SARS-CoV-2 based on sa mga reports. Um, there are anthropo anthropoenotic uh, transmission reported. The anthropoenotic is a natural transmission of an infectious disease of humans to animals. The first case is you know, a 17-year-old Pomeranian. <clears throat> the pet was tested after the owner developed the COVID-19. Although the dog has no clinical signs, it was taken to a nearby animal quarantine facility where oral nasal rectal swab specimens were collected from the dog for SARS-CoV-2 testing. The oral nasal swab returned weak positive results. Additional swab specimens were collected from the dog and on the dog on two further occasion over the next five days, and they again tested weak positive. Those samples. The dog remained uh, under mandatory quarantine at the facility for 14 days before returning back to the owner. Despite having no signs of clinical Ill illness, the dog died after two days after returning home. The cause of the death remains unknown because the owner uh, did not permit the post um uh, mortem examination. It is believed the dog died because the dog had underlying health condition and due to the old age. Authorities in Hong Kong reported that it is unlikely that the dog's death was related to the was uh, dogs was related to positive, unlikely related to the positive SARS-CoV test results of the dog. The next case is another dog tested positive in Hong Kong. German Shepherd siya, yung owner is positive. May kasama pa silang isang dog, mixed breed siya, pero nag-negative siya. No signs of illness. <clears throat> the first case ng cat was report, ng cat 
coronavirus infection or COVID-19 um, was reported from Belgium in one province in Belgium. The cat tested positive from SARS-CoV-2 after one week after its owner was diagnosed with COVID-19. The cat showed signs of illness, including diarrhea, vomiting, and difficulty of breathing. Samples of vomit and feces from the cat were tested and show high levels of SARS-CoV-2 in those samples. Fortunately, the cat recovered after nine days. And another cat was infected after in March 31, uh, cat being kept in quarantine after testing positive for SARS-CoV-2, uh, rectal swabs uh, came positive, the owner, is, has also been diagnosed with COVID-19. However, this particular case, the cat had no signs of illness. As of June 8, American Veterinary Medical Association, Association reported fewer than 25 cases of uh, pets tested positive with uh, SARS-CoV-2. Although millions of people around the world having tested, uh, pa uh, tested positive for coronavirus, virus, only few cases were reported in which animal have apparently tested positive for SARS-CoV-2. In all cases, the animal owners were sick with COVID-19 and are believed to be most likely source of transmission of the virus to their pets. Using PCR with reverse uh, transcription serology, sequencing and viral genome and virus isolation was used to detect the SARS-CoV-2 in animals. Um, <clears throat> Um, there's a company in the U.S. that conducts um, parang random testing dun sa animals. Um, based as result nila out of 1,000, um, parang tatlo lang yung lumabas na result, which is uh, upon tracing, yung may are is positive also. So nakita niyo yung difference. So hindi ganun kalaki or hindi uh, prevalent or hindi always present yung, yung SARS-CoV-2 sa mga hayop. Nahahawa din sila sa atin or sa mga person with COVID-19. Um, there is a study in China, as I mentioned kanina, they checked the susceptibility of dogs, ferrets, cats, and other domesticated animals. They found out that dogs, chickens, pigs, ducks have low susceptibility. However, ferrets and cats are the most susceptible. They found out that SARS-CoV-2 can be experimentally transmitted between cats. They infected cats with samples from wet market from Wuhan, uh, wet market, and from a person with COVID-19. In cats, viral RNA was detected in soft palates, tonsils, trachea, lungs, small intestine, at the third and sixth day post-infection, which is similar to what is hap what happened sa mga tao. Na nakikita mo na sa ilong, then later on bababa yung infection at magkakos ng pneumonia sa loob. Virus can replicate efficiently in cats. And as I mentioned, based on age, younger cats are more vulnerable than older cats. In the same study, the mode of transmission on cats is through respiratory droplets, and the viral RNA could be detected 12 days after infection. But what makes this infection possible in these animals, in ferrets and in cats? The reason for this is the spike, like yun nabanggit ko kanina, the S protein of SARS-CoV-2 that binds well to the ACE2 receptor like that of the human. Same sila ng infinity or yung tibay ng kapit ng, ng S protein ng virus, same ng kapit ng, vi ng virus sa human receptors. What are the clinical signs uh, we observe? Typically, coronavirus infection siya. Ito yung makita niya, fever, um, coughing, difficulty breathing, shortness of breath, uh, lethargy, sneezing, nasal or ocular discharge, vomit, uh, vomiting, and diarrhea. Well, aside from the direct effects on the health, welfare of animals and veterinary service is also affected due to restriction, biosecurity measures done by the government or by the disease itself. Quarantine of the pet owners, pets were left behind, left to die in China due to starvation. Kasi na-quarantine yung animals, tapos akala nila makakabalik uli, makakabalik agad, pero it end up having uh, quarantined sila for a month. So yun, uh, yung starvation is common dun sa ganun situation. Pet might spread the disease. That, um, 
Uh, tapos there's an unnecessary death because uh, the animals are left behind and the animals are are euthanized because sa tingin nila uh, these animals could spread the uh, the SARS-CoV-2. And of course, yung mga naka-schedule na mga veterinary services na vaccination or yung mga surgery um, affected then dahil yung veterinary veterinarians are on skeletal workforce and lim, uh, on limited services. So, in conclusion, the current pandemics, the pandemic highlights the relationship between animals, people, and the environment. Human-to-human -human transmission could be controlled, sh uh, should be controlled. Pet animals are affected directly as seen, as seen in cases of infection as well as indirectly through their welfare and interrupted veter veterinary services. The existing coronavirus infection unique to cats and dog like you mentioned kakarina, do not contribute to the current COVID-19 pandemic. And there's no data yet to support the fear of some that SARS-CoV-2 infected animals could participate in the spread of the virus to humans and other animals in the natural setting. That ends my uh, talk. Thank you very much for listening. These are my references. Thank you very much, Dr. Lunar. Um, reserve your questions at the end of the talk of the second speaker. We will have the Q&A after the second speaker. And now we introduce our second speaker. The speaker is from the province of Bukid Philippines. He completed the Doctor of Veterinary Medicine at Central Mindanao University. He finished his Master of Science in Medicine Major in Internal Medicine at the University of the Philippines, Pasuna. In 2015, he attended by management trainings for veterans and pursued further training by being part of the Lubach for the Philippine Advanced Biosecurity Office training course. For the past five years, he has attended and presented papers in various local and international conferences for virus management. Currently, he is an associate professor of the College of Veterinary Medicine at Central Mindanao University and chair of the Department of Microbiology, Parasitology, Pathology, and Public Health. He also manages the first veterinary clinic in their town. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Ruth M. Ovidencio, Jr. Hello, good evening, everyone. The presentation will provide us uh, the current status of veterinary care during the current pandemic and some measures to be taken to make workplace safer for our personnel as well as our clients. If you noticed in the first presentation, it's all about, uh, if you are familiar with the virus management, we have the AMP model in the old times, uh, the assessment, mitigation, and performance, and we have the, the plan to uh, check and act. And in this section of the presentation, this more or less covers the uh, the mitigation part or the M the M part in the AMP model. So some sections in the presentation are based on the guidelines of OSHA, DTI, and DOLE. So as a disclaimer, the views expressed during my talk are purely my personal opinion. I'm only speaking solely for myself and not as a representative of Central Mindanao University. The professionals, facilities, and companies that will be mentioned in the presentation are mere examples and should not be construed as an endorsement, okay? So the World Organization for Animal Health, or OIE, and the World Veterinary Association advocate for veterinary services to be considered as essential business. Uh, fortunately, the IATF also considered veterinary service as an essential service. So regardless of local classification, whether you are in ECQ areas, MECQ, up to the MGCQ or what we have now, the moderate rate, risk MCQ, the low risk MCQ, uh, veterinary clinics and pet shops are allowed to operate. So the Bureau of Animal Industry also provided IATF IDs to allow veterinarians access pass amidst the local travel restrictions. The operation of various facilities just differ, if you notice, depending on the facility policy and 
the IATF and local government guidelines that will directly or indirectly affect their own operation. What were the effects of the current pandemic on veterinary care facilities? And these effects are common in not only in veterinary facilities, but all other uh, services or business in the country. The first is absenteeism, uh, or even in most cases, tardiness, because there are many reasons why workers could be absent during this time. So it's either they are sick, they are affected by COVID-19, or they're having symptoms like the flu-like symptoms or other illness with similar symptoms that will require them to be absent. Or they can be caregivers of sick family members. At this point in time, also schools in most areas are still closed and thus they can be caregivers for children. So wala mga yaya or wala mga bantay sa bahay. So at some point, some parents would be forced to stay at home. And they have at least people at home, those who are very young and as well as those very old and have weaker immune system. The local travel restrictions also prohibits the movement of people and usually delays the reporting of some personnel to work. And very importantly, the availability of public transportation is an issue for most workers. Siguro lahat naman tayo affected. The restriction of passengers for motorcycle greatly affected the operations of facilities since several of the personnel relied on ride sharing up using motorcycles as well as being ferried by family members using the same mode of transportation. Thus, thus, absenteeism and tardiness leads to reduced number of personnel and consequently reduced capacity to provide essential services. For the information of everybody, some veterinary clinics which are quite small have only one to two veterinarians at a time and similar number of assistants. And thus, an absence or just being late of a personnel will actually mean non-operation of some facilities. The second is change in patterns of commerce. We have seen it ourselves that consumer demand for items related to infection prevention increased significantly in the past months. Uh, similarly, in veterinary practice, expectedly the essentials are prioritized by most owners. So, yung mga toys, hindi masyadong ma uh, mga malaki yung benta compared to essentials na pets. Consumers showed increased interest in home delivery services or prefer other options such as drive to service to reduce person-to-person -person contact. And consumers may try to shop at off-peak hours to reduce contact with other people. The third is interrupt interrupted supply and delivery. Uh, some shipments of items from geographic areas severely affected by COVID-19 may be delayed or canceled with or without notification. And this aspect greatly affected the veterinary care industry considering that Majority of veterinary products for the whole country needs to pass through major cities such as Metro Manila and Metro Cebu. And thus, uh, even intra-island distribution in, in the major islands is quite difficult and supply for vaccines, essential drugs, and pet foods were greatly affected. So this section describes the basic steps that every facility can take to reduce the risk of exposure of the personnel as well as clients to SARS-CoV-2 inside the veterinary facility. So first and foremost, a facility should have uh, a disease preparedness and response plan. So if one does not already exist, then we need to develop one that can help guide protective actions against COVID-19. So we need to stay abreast of guidance from national or local health agencies and consider how to incorporate these recommendations and resources into workplace specific plans like the recently released guidelines from DTI and DOLU. So we need to consider and address the level of risk associated with various uh, job and sites in the facility. So in consideration in planning includes the where, how, and what are the sources of SARS-CoV-2 for your workers, for the general public, for your coworkers, as well as including the non-occupational risk factors at home and workers' individual risk factors and then the controls necessary to address those risks. In making contingency plans, we need to follow national or local recommendations and consider the, the one that we mentioned earlier, the increased rates of workers' absenteeism, the need for social distancing, the option for conducting essential operation with reduced workforce and the interrupted supply chains or 
delayed deliveries. Second is prepare to implement basic infection prevention measures. So for most employers, protecting workers will depend on emphasizing basic infection prevention measures. And as appropriate, all employers should implement good hygiene and infection control practices. So in the DTI and DOLI guidelines, the employees are required to have the following care to in front of employees as well as clients. So as I think this is very familiar to all of you. We need to wear masks at all times. We need to answer a daily questionnaire, checking of body temperature, disinfection of vehicles in the premises, as well as strict uh, physical distancing at all times. The DTI also uh, advocated that all work areas and frequently handled objects shall be cleaned and disinfected regularly and sanitizers shall be made available in public areas as well as in areas where workers pass. Uh, workers either in office workstation or operation area shall always practice physical distancing and it is discouraged to eat in communal areas and thus it's be best to eat in individual areas at this point in time. And then we need to promote frequent and thorough hand washing, including by providing workers, customers, and visitors a place to wash their hands. In the absence of soap and running water in the area, um, we need to provide alcohol-based hand rubs containing at least 60% alcohol. And then we need to encourage respiratory etiquette, including covering cups and sneezes. And then provision of tissues and trust receptacles in for your customers and for the public. Employers should explore also whether they can establish policies and practice such as flexible work. Uh, you know, for prolonged face-to-face -face interaction between employees and clients should be discouraged and masks shall be worn at all times. Thus, the use of telecommunication is encouraged. Video conferencing shall be utilized for lengthy discussion among workers and clients. And unidirectional movement in aisles, corridors, and walkways is encouraged also. The use of stairs is highly encouraged. If you need to use an elevator, then the number of persons inside should be limited. And it is very important. We need to discourage our co-workers from using other workers' phones, desks, offices, or other work tools and equipment when possible. And then maintain regular housekeeping practices, including routine cleaning and disinfection of surfaces. So third is we need to develop policies and procedures for prompt identification and isolation of sick people. The prompt identification and isolation of potentially infectious individual is a critical step in protecting the workers, your clients and visitors in the workplace. Um, employers should inform and encourage the employees to self-monitor for signs and symptoms of COVID-19 if they suspect possible exposure. And employers should develop policies and procedures for employees to report when they are sick or experiencing symptoms of COVID-19. In the event that there's um, a worker is suspected as having COVID-19, the worker should be isolated immediately in the facility and then clinic personnel that will be attending should wear complete PPE. And if needed, you need to transport the worker to the nearest hospital to be further examined. In the workplace, uh, we, should need, we should disinfect and decontaminate the workplace with appropriate disinfectant. And then work can resume 24 hours after decontamination based on the guidelines of DTI and DOLI. Uh, the workers present during in that incident with a suspected COVID-19 uh, co-workers should undergo 14 days of quarantine. If suspected COVID-19 worker got a negative result, then the rest of the co-workers, the quarantine co-workers can resume to work. But the suspected uh, co-worker needs to finish the quarantine. The next is to develop, implement, and communicate about workplace flexibilities and protection. So for medical certificate, because in, in the policy, in most policies, we need to encourage sick employees to stay at home. The problem for some employees is that they need to present medical certificate. But at this point in time, healthcare provider as a hospitals, clinics may be extremely busy and cannot be able to provide such documentation in a timely way. So employers should uh, craft a policy that does not require healthcare 
provider's note or a medical certificate for employees to be sick or absent. So calling in sick at this point in time should be allowed for most facilities. Um, be aware, we need to be aware of the concerns of workers about pay, the leave, safety, health, and other issues during this current pandemic. So we need to provide the workers adequate, usable, and appropriate training, education, and informational material. Uh, for employee employers, it is very important to note that informed workers at this point in time who feel safe, who feel safe at work, are less likely to be unnecessarily absent. Kasi yung iba, uh, Uma-absent na lang kasi takot or hindi nila alam ang gagawin. So, we need to provide training and information to our workers. And then, implement workplace control. Occupational safety and health professionals, we usually have this term of hierarchy of controls to select ways of controlling workplace hazard. So, we have here the very familiar hierarchy of control for everyone. First is the elimination and substitution, which is to eliminate the hazard or removing the hazard. Then we have the engineering controls, which is the physical changes to workstations, equipment, and materials, or any other relevant aspect of the work environment that reduce or prevent exposure to hazards. Then administrative controls are trainings, policies, standards, and guidelines used to control risk. Then the practices and procedures are processes and activities that has been shown in practice to be effective in reducing risk. And then last but not the least, the PPE or the personal protective equipment are devices worn by the workers to protect against the hazard. Um, if we want to look into the hierarchy of controls, you wanted to use the topmost of these controls to eliminate the hazard, so we need to remove it. But one way of removing is really not to report to work. But in our case, in the veterinary care facilities, even for uh, health workers, for allied health workers, uh, this is not the case, considering that we are offering essential services. And thus, we resort to engineering controls, which involve isolating employees from work-related hazards. So these are just reducing hazards without relying on worker behavior. Very good example is the installation of high-efficiency air filters in the workplace, increasing ventilation rates in the work environment, uh, installing physical barriers such as clear plastic sneeze guards, and the installation of drive through window for customer service. Then we have the admin controls, which are changes in work policy or procedures. So minimizing contact among workers, clients, and customers by replacing face-to-face -face meetings with virtual communications and implementing telework if feasible. Uh, also this one, discontinuing of non-essential travel to local to locations with ongoing COVID-19 outbreaks. So in the local setting for veterinarians, home service to areas that are considered hotspots or critical zones are highly discouraged at this point in time. And then providing workers with up-to-date education and training on COVID-19 risk factors and protective behaviors like cough etiquette and the proper use of your PPE. Then safe work practices include procedures for safe and proper work used to reduce the duration, frequency, or intensity of exposure to a hazard. So we need to provide resources and work environment that promote personal hygiene. So provision of tissues, no touch, trash cans, hand soap, and others. And then of course, re requiring regular hand washing or using alcohol-based hand rubs. And workers should always wash hands when they are visibly soiled and after removing your PPE. And then, then we have the PPE. Um, while correctly using PPE can help prevent some exposures, it should not take the place of other prevention strategies. So employers, very important, employers are obligated to provide their workers with PPE needed to keep them safe while performing their job. So the type of PPE required during COVID-19 outbreak will be based on the risk of being infected while working and job tasks that may lead to exposure. So going back to our hierarchy of control, the best way to control a hazard is to systematically remove it from a workplace rather than relying on workers to reduce their exposure. But during the COVID-19 outbreak, it's not really pos possible to eliminate the hazard. So the most effective protection measures 
at this point in time that is available to us is in the topmost, which is the engineering controls, down to the very at the least effective, which is the PPE. So to help employers determine appropriate precautions, we have here the uh, exposures at different levels. We have the very high, high, medium, and low risk. The level of risk depends on the industry type, the need for close contact to people known to be or suspected of being infected with SARS-CoV-2 or the need for repeated or extended contact with persons suspected or infected with SARS-CoV-2. The very high exposure risk jobs are those with high potential for exposure to known suspected sources of COVID-19 during specific medical, post-mortem or laboratory procedures. So we have here healthcare workers, the morgue workers, the healthcare delivery and support staff, medical transport workers, mortuary workers and others that are exposed to uh, possible uh, suspect COVID-19 patients or COVID-19 patients that are confirmed. The medium exposure risk jobs include those that require frequent or close contact with people who may be infected with SARS-CoV-2, but who are not known or suspected COVID-19 patients. So in areas without ongoing community transmission, uh, workers in this risk group may have frequent contact with travelers who may return from international location with widespread COVID-19. But in areas where there is ongoing community transmission, which is currently most areas in the Philippines, workers in this category may have contact with the general public. So those, I think this most, most of the workers which have in contact with the general public are in this category. And then we have the lower exposure risk jobs. So workers in this category have minimal occupational contact with the public and other co-workers. So going back to our occupational risk pyramid, this is where most of the workers belongs in the medium risk and including those in the veterinary care facilities. So what to do to protect the workers? So we'll just focus on the medium risk because this is where the veterinary care facilities belong. So for engineering controls, we just need to install physical barriers such as clear plastic sneeze guards where feasible. And administrative controls, consider offering face masks to sick employees and customers to contain respiratory secretions until they are able to leave the workplace. Uh, we need to post signs about COVID-19, uh, limit customers and public access to our workplace, consider strategies to minimize face-to-face -face contact and communicate the availability of medical screening or other worker health resources. Then for PPE, wear some combination of gloves, gowns, face masks, or face shields or goggles. So later on, we'll have the specific uh, recommendation. Okay, this is the next, in the next slide, we have here the recommendation from the CDC on the PPE based on the companion animal history. So if you take a look, if you will just be examining healthy companion animals without exposure to a person with COVID-19 compatible symptoms, uh, there's no need to wear uh, PPE. So face mask, uh, eye protection, gloves, and others are not necessary, it's recommended. However, if you are examining a companion animal that is not suspicious of SARS-CoV-2 infection, but it has exposure to a person with COVID-19 compatible symptoms and we need to wear face masks and gloves. In the lower portion, if we are doing aerosol generating procedures for any animal with exposure to a person with COVID-19 compatible symptoms, as well as any procedure where a person with suspected or uh, confirmed COVID-19 is present during your examination, then you need to wear your eye protection, gloves, uh, protective outerwear, either gown or coveralls, as well as N95 respirators. Uh, we also need to understand that there's more than one donning method that may be acceptable. So there's no uh, black and white standard that this is the way to wear your PPE. And thus training and practice using your clinic's procedure is very critical. And thus, as I mentioned earlier, you need to conduct training within your facility, what is applicable to your facility based on your risk assessment. 
The recommendation given by CDC may change over time as new information becomes available. We also take to consider the constraints in the availability of PPE and thus veterinarians should use your professional judgment regarding the potential for exposure to COVID-19 and PPE resource constraints when determining the appropriate PPE precautions to apply. Okay, the AVMA or the American Veterinary Medical Association conducted a survey in the United States this year to understand how COVID-19 has affected veterinary practices. On the operational side, the most common approach has been asking clients to wait in vehicles during animal exam and treatment. So this is what we call as curbside service or care. Other operational changes include uh, contactless payment processing, taking, pay, taking patient history by phone or virtually, and drive through pickup and drop off. So over 30% of the veterinary practice on those surveys are using telemedicine and close to 20% of practices. We're only seeing uh, emergency related case at the time of the survey. In the Philippines, uh, I have not came across with a data similar to this one. However, we have seen similar trends in veterinary practice as in the United States. So very common in the Philippines now is the appointment. Unlike before, wherein most clients will just visit on their own convenient time, the current pandemic uh, changes the landscape of veterinary appointments. So most veterinary clinics will only entertain clients with confirmed appointments. So those who have no prior appointments are usually not accommodated if there are no available slots, considering the limitations in uh, availability of space and the strict uh, implemented uh, physical distancing policy. Then we also have here the curbside service. So one example here that I've seen that came across in Facebook is the one practice in the Animal Kingdom Veterinary Hospital in Cebu, where in this scheduled drop off appointments or receiving of companion animals from their owner's vehicle and then assigning specific personnel which wears a complete PPE to have contact with the client. So this, this personnel is considered as medium risk category considering that he is the one that is exposed to the general public. However, this also allows the facility to limit the contact of the majority of the workers inside the facility to possible sources of infection. And thus majority of the workers are reduced to the low risk category. And then communicating via telephone or video chat to maintain social distancing during uh, client interview and history taking. And then we also have the home veterinary services. So I also came across this sometime in, um, I think June or July, the Casa de Perro, I think this is located in Sambuanga City, which launched their uh, home veterinary services to cater to clients who have difficulty in transportation during the strict implementation of quarantine or to cater to those who have fear of going outside their homes due to the fear of the pandemic. And then, of course, telehealth. The telehealth covers a wide array of services. We have the telemedicine, teleadvice, teletrials, teleconsulting, telemonitoring, the e-prescription. Uh, veterinarians can offer telemedicine services as long as they have established a veterinarian client-patient relationship. If no VCPR exists, the veterinarian or any other veterinary care professional can only offer general advice that is not specific to a particular patient. It should not include diagnosing, prognosing, or treating patient's condition. In some instances, uh, veterinarians are incorporating access to telemedicine services as part of the pet wellness plans in their facility. So I have seen this one. This is from the city of Taguig. They offer telemedicine to their constituents way back in June uh, as an answer to the absence of mobile veterinarians or the availability of face-to-face -face, uh, consultation. I also came across with this one because in other cases, veterinarians are partnering with third-party service providers to offer clients telemedicine service as an extension of their hospital service offerings. So this one, uh, this is a startup company that is launched during the pandemic um, to seize the opportunity or the gap in the veterinary care in online consultation. So this is the focus mostly on tele-advice considering that some clients 
do not have yet a veterinary client patient relationship because some are new uh, clients that are just asking for an online guidance. Okay. So the current pandemic affected all aspects of our daily life, including travel, trade, tourism, food supplies, and financial markets. So the it also affected our our how we care for our patients, how we care for our pets. But looking into the current trends that we have and the current practices of veterinary care, there's there's a light that we can still continue with veterinary care, but in caring for your pets and caring for the animals, we also need to consider the safety of the owners, the safety of the clients, the safety especially of the workers inside the facility. So we hope that the presentation would help the veterinary care professionals, the pet owners in dealing with this pandemic in consideration to the safety of everyone. So thank you very much. Maraming salamat, dagang salamat. And before anything else, I would like to say thank you to Ms. Iris Risma who helped me prepare the slides. So thank you, Ms. Iris. This is a medical technologist in our lab. Okay, so these are the references. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Obidensha. And now we go to the um, Q&A portion. I think uh, this triggered a lot of interest uh, to our audience. So we have many questions. Um, if ever we will not be able to uh, pick your questions, we will give all these questions to the speakers and they will answer this and then will be posted in the website. Okay, let's uh, shoot the first question. The first question is, is there any vaccine available for feline or feline enteric coronavirus? Dr. Lunar. Um, sa ngayon, ma meron pong isa na available pero hindi siya ginagamit kasi uh, yung, yung tagal ng effect ng corona ayun, ng, ng vaccine is hindi ganun siya katatagal. So i-weigh mo yung value na mabibigay nun sa hayop, parang wala lang din. So hindi siya, hindi siya ginagamit ito sa Philippines. Pero to answer that, yes, may, may available commercially. Okay. Thank you. Now, how do we dispose species of dogs infected with the virus? Dr. Dunar? Oh. Um, Iti-treat natin siya as biological, uh, biological waste. So, proper, yung proper protocol doon is kailangan i- uh, yung waste bag uh, aligned doon sa biohazard na protocol yung lalagyan mo siyang disinfectant at saka um, kung may third party kayo na ano na may kakontrata kayo na third party usually ganun yung waste na ginagawa namin sa lab so pwede niyo siyang i, i padala sa kanila pero before niya ibibigay sa kanila kailangan properly uh, may disinfected yung yung waste and kung may autoclave kayo sa clinic or sa lab as much as possible dapat may intended na gamit na autoclave for that all right thank you very much another question for you dr lunar um if um it's about uh, for evidence of bats as reservoir for sars cov in our current state of pandemic, where does the mutation comes from? Mm. What do you think? Um, yung mutation po kasi, uh, nangyayari talaga siya. I'm sure you're all familiar with the natural selection. Uh, Nag-a-adapt nag, nag tayo towards a certain situation or certain host or yung mga viruses para mag-jive uh, mag in siya or mag-survive. Now, uh, yung COVID-19 is an RNA virus between RNA and COVID and DNA corona uh, uh, DNA viruses ang coro ang RNA viruses mas mataas yung incidence ng mutation sa kanila so as reported nakita ko siya um, parang na nadaanan ko siya meron parang G section na from a patient human patient nakita nila na nagmutate yung ano yung yung virus and uh, yung yung mutation noon is dahil dun sa enzyme na nag assemble ng ng RNA doon nang gagaling yung enzyme na yun yung RNA polymerase na enzyme 
uh, sinasabi nila doon nanggagaling yung mutation. So, yun, sa environment, sa sa, whole, sa sa available na mga receptors or mga chemicals doon sa loob ng katawan ng host, pwede rin yun. And of course, yung sa enzyme. Yeah. Okay, so, possible a mutation. Okay. Um, there's another question here. What's the difference between cats and dogs that made the dogs less susceptible to COVID? Um, ang main nakikita nila ngayon na ano po, um, na reason bakit uh, mas tawag nito, mas resistant or hindi masyadong susceptible si dogs is i-coconnect lahat natin dun sa ACE2 receptor pa rin po. So yung affinity niya, yung molecular component ng ACE2 doon pa rin po. Yun po yung, okay. Sa ngayon po, na wala pa masyadong studies na ginagawa, sa ngayon po, doon pa rin po yung tinuturo nilang dahilan bakit resist, resistant si dog. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Denar. Uh, for Dr. Ovidencio, um, have you encountered pet owners positive with SARS-CoV? Okay. Have you encountered? Uh, fortunately, in, the lo in our location, we... Although we are in GCQ and we have local transmission in neighboring towns, uh, we don't have base, uh, uh, We don't have a lot of local transmission yet. I think there's only one local transmission in our locality, and thus we have not experienced uh, pet owners which were considered positive with SARS-CoV-2. All right. If yes. ever, um, if ever there will be um, a case, uh, do we have a case already in the Philippines? of uh, this SARS-CoV? Uh, unfortunately, not none that was reported. Maybe because in the absence of uh, testing for pets, which is not required or which is not recommended also by CDC. Uh, as of this time, CDC has not uh, recommended routine testing for pets as one way, considering the limitations in the the entire in the entire world on the testing kits as well but there's already an available test kits in the united states as well as there's a certain uh, company that has provided uh, that's prepared for testing in animals but in the philippines we have not encountered a commercially available test kit and thus um, testing for pets is not routinary uh, so so you're not doing any any test even the rt pcr for the animals Yes, as of this moment. Yeah. Okay. But if ever um, this occurs in animals here in the Philippines, are you ready to treat them? Are the veterinarians yes. equipped? Uh, very good question because it's a similar question that can be addressed by any uh, for the medical doctors. The question is, are we ready? Nobody is ready because of the 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 virus being a novel one, we don't understand so much about it. There are still some questions with it. And thus, even in in the human uh, sector, uh, we, we are still in the process of clinical trials for, for the treatment. For the animals, we have not started on doing clinical trials, considering there's no available uh, uh, samples or patients that can be tested. Uh, however, as the same with our partners in the human side, uh, we address the patient and the symptoms. So I think the veterinary sector in the Philippines is quite prepared. Most veterinary hospitals have, uh, have um, better facilities to address patients with symptoms uh, that has been mentioned by Dr. Lunar that will be exhibited by patients with uh, SARS-CoV-2. Um, okay, related to this, if the um, do you have any guidelines from IATF or WHO or even the CDC about the pet owners being positive with COVID? What do you do with the pets? Do they do we move them to your facility, the vet facility? Okay. What do you think? Uh, what was what was recommended was to isolate and quarantine. It's not yet clear based on the, the guidelines, depending on the local guidelines already, if they need to be isolated somewhere. So 
but the the very important thing is we need if the animal is if in the near future we can we, we can have the test for animals and it's found to be positive then we need to isolate the animals similarly with people who are considered positive but to where uh we hope that the government or the the veterinary sector or the IATF will have a specific uh, facility for that but for the meantime isolation is the the key word and to where that's we will cross the bridge when we get there okay um there is one question here about uh when um although this does not happen yet but when uh, you find a pet to be positive with COVID-19, is it recommended to euthanize the pet as soon as possible? No. Uh, because in, in the previous uh, cases that we have encountered that was mentioned by Dr. Lunar, uh, the patients have uh, mild uh, symptoms. However, some of those who died actually have underlying disease. Um, the evidence that we have right now shows that the SARS-CoV-2 can be transmitted by can be transmitted to animals from infected uh, owners, but there's no evidence yet to prove that the animals can be uh, the mode of trans uh, can can be a major mode of transmission to other people. And thus, as it at this point in time, the CDC and the WHO does not uh, even advocate for allowing animals to wear masks or any protective gear or disinfecting your animals before washing them with alcohol because these animals are not yet proven to be the major mode of transmission. As of this time, the major mode of transmission is still person to person. And thus the animal plays a very small role in the transmission of SARS-CoV-2 to the general public. And that there's no need to euthanize your infected animals. <laughs> Ma Thank Lai? you very much. Yes. Okay. Tama yes, po yung sinabi ni Doc Joe. Pero sa, sa US din po, um, may parang dalawang choices sila kasi yeah. advance naman ang US. Pwede mo silang ipunta sa shelter pero sa atin dito sa Philippines wala naman tayong ganun quarantine yeah. area para sa mga tao nga. Hirap-hirap tayo. <laughs> 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 or yung second option po Ma'am Lai is um, kung ga kung may tatlo kang choice kung gano'n siya ka-importante sa'yo pwede mo siyang ikip I ialagaan siya kasi galing naman sa yung infection eh. So yun, pwede mo siyang ikip sa bahay mo at alagaan siya. Yun okay. Yung recommend Pero na. yung yung mga cases that kasi you mentioned cases in China or even in US sa mga dogs and naka-recover I mean sa cats, cats pala. Naka-recover. How yes, how do you think bakit uh, mabilis gumaling yung cats? Ma walang, walang worst case, di ba? Opo, opo. Siguro ma'am hindi pa siya ganun nagmo-mutate yung ano, hindi yung uh, yung yung virus uh, na mag-adapt sa sa cats talaga. Gaya nung sinabi ko uh, doon sa SARS-CoV na ano, possible uh, nag eventually mag mag-evolve siya tapos yung affinity niya doon sa receptor na yon or doon sa particular host is um, para siyang magiging parang magiging close sila. So hindi pa siguro nangyayari 'yon doon sa sa ngayon sa mga cats na unti-unti. Pero let's see kung uh, this progresses baka makita na natin yung mga ganong sitwasyon na mas mal malala na rin yung effect nito sa mga cats and dogs. Pero sa ngayon Or po, siguro hindi... kasi nga kanina may mga cases ka na matanda na yung ano, 'di ba? Yung animal. Yes, so yung matanda mabilis ding mamatay. Parang sa tao, mabilis din na mamatay yung matanda. Opo, ma'am. Tapos, ma'am, eto may theory kasi, eh, theory pa ba ito? Sa mga cross, mas sabi ng ano, pag crossbreed daw yung dog or yung cat, mas matapang daw yung, yung panlaban niya sa infection. Doon sa case kanina, yung German Shepherd, which is yung pure breed, pure breed tapos yung crossbreed na dog, yung naka, mas nakakuha ng infection yung German Shepherd. So, yung possible pure. din po yun. Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. Possible then po. Genetics okay. There's, okay. There is one question here for Doc Obs. You were mentioning about the veterinary services. Is there um, 
a specific guideline given by IATF regarding veterinary services? Okay. Um, for IATF, I think they just mentioned on the veterinary service as an essential. However, the Bureau of Animal Industry of the Department of Agriculture have issued uh, specific administrative orders on veterinarians also. So, for specific guidelines on, hindi ko lang alam kung ano yung guidelines na hinahanap niya. But for guidelines on how to handle or something like that, there's none that I've seen. But for the IATF, I think they just wanted that the services for veterinarians be considered an essential and continued regardless of the category of the quarantine in the area. Yeah, I think uh, you're following the general uh, recommendation, like uh, setting up an appointment yeah. rather than going directly. So that happened to me also. I need mm -hmm. to set up an appointment with the, the vet before going to the clinic. Is there any study on cross immunity from corona vaccines on animals against COVID-19? What wala, do you think? Wala pa po. Wala. Walang yeah. cases ng... Pati yung vaccine, yung vaccine nila, ma'am, uh, hindi siya nakakaprotekta sa coronavirus or SARS-CoV-2. Pero siyempre, kailangan pa rin natin ibigay yung coronavirus kasi may protection pa rin siya sa ibang coronavirus. Pero sa SARS-CoV-2, wala pa ho. Wala right. pang study. Okay. Um, there is a question here about the testing. Although you mentioned kanina na wala namang testing. Uh, testing pang ginagawa. But in the other parts of the world, anong klaseng testing ang ginagawa? Is it rapid testing or is it RT-PCR? Ma'am, a combination siya ng RT-PCR, uh, gaya nung sa tao na yung same pa rin po na process, yung pinipurify yung, in-extract yung RNA, pinipurify, tapos eventually pinapasok siya sa, sa thermocycler. Same pa rin po. Pero the, ano, uh, is primer, same sequence then yung primer, same primer yung ginagamit? Yung well, sa, in the uh, hindi ko pa siya nakita ma'am pero may isang sabi naman ni Dr. Jo kanina may ay IDEX ata yon sa US nag uh, nag uh, parang binavalidate pa ho nila yung kanilang uh, ano yung kanilang testing sa dog uh, sa dogs pero may nakausap ako ng expert on molecular bio um kasi si, um sinasabi niya yung internal checking is the same as dun sa sa sa, sa dog. So baka pwedeng explore na kung hindi na tayo naghihirap sa RT-PCR at hindi na limited yung ano natin, baka pwedeng natin explore yun na pwedeng gamitin yun sa tao. Ah, okay. So, kasi same lang naman po eh, ng process. Dun lang tama po si tama po si Doc Doms. Uh, RT-PCR din po yung gamit ng yung company na na mention. Okay. Um, if ever, since uh, I know wala pang nare-report here, but then if ever, as mentioned kanina ni, ni Dr. Lunar about the signs and symptoms, kung makita natin yung pets natin na meron ng mga signs and symptoms, uh, where do we bring our pets? To the city vet or to, to the clinics or where? Where do we go? Okay. Uh, as as in any protocol or say any standard procedure, uh, if the animal is brought to a veterinarian, regardless if it's a set city, a government veterinarian, or a private clinic facility, eh, there's nothing. Uh, wala pa kasing wala pa kasing flowchart kung anong gagawin kung merong symptoms. Because if you notice in the one that was mentioned by Doctor uh, Lunar earlier. The, the symptoms are non-specific. And this, uh, these symptoms actually shows in most of the client, uh, patients that we encounter every day. Uh, naman, at this point in time, hindi pa natin may isip na uh, kung may ubo tayo, ito yung, may ubo yung aso ko, uh, COVID na ba to? Similarly sa, kasi sa atin, uh, we show these symptoms, although sa, sa, sa human side, may, may protocol na kung saan dadalhin. However, at this point in time in the veterinary service uh, 
side, uh, wala pang ganung protocol kung saan dadalhin. But if it is suspected, let's say for example, if the veterinarian is highly suspected to be uh, infected based on the clinical signs as well as on the history, contact with uh, a COVID positive individual in the household, then that's that's the time that that should be brought to the authorities for intervention. Anong ginagamit na sample pag nag-test? Rectal? Doms, nakamute ka. Doms, Doms, nakamute. <laughs> Yan, nasagot ko po sa, sa chat, ma'am. Uh, nasal, throat, and rectal swabs. Sabay-sabay. Alright. So, ma ma mag-nasal <laughs> din? Nasal yes, and throat din? Opo, sa dog. Oh my God, kakagating ka. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Kaya mga maabilidad ang mga veterinaryo. <laughs> Ang hirap magpanganga. <laughs> Oo, ma'am. Kaya nila yun. <laughs> Alright, so that ends our Q&A. I hope uh, we answered most, uh, the speakers answered most of the questions in the chat box. And now we'll have the synthesis by Dr. Moreno. Hello again, everyone. Thank you, ma'am Laila. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank our two expert veterinarians for a very informative and new interesting topic. And by the way, they, this, the, two, the two expert speakers are both members of good standing of BRAP. They and other veterinarians, they bridge the gap between human and animal health. Our two speakers both clearly show that the current pandemic highlights the relationship between animals, people, and the environment. It was also emphasized that our pets are affected directly as seen in cases of infections and indirectly also through their welfare and interrupted veterinary services. Finally, they clarified and we were made to understand that the existing coronavirus infection unique to cats and dogs do not contribute to the current COVID-19 pandemic. And there is no data yet to support the fear of some that SARS-CoV-2 infected animals could participate in the spread of the virus to humans and other animals in the natural setting. Uh, for those questions which were not answered previously, we will post this uh, in our uh, group page after the two speakers have uh, answer them. We will send this to them so that they will answer each question individually. Uh, thank you very uh, much. Thank you. Maraming salamat po. Maraming thank you everybody for joining salamat. us.